Well, folks, we're almost there. It's time to say goodbye to the world of Breaking Bad. And honestly, we're not sure we're ready for that. Better Call Saul has been blowing our minds week after week. And now there are only three episodes left in the show. And in today's video, we're talking about Bob Odenkirk reflecting on his heart attack as the show wraps up. First up, Bob Odenkirk talks about his heart attack. As we head towards the finale of Better Call Saul, the show's star, and if you ask us, one of the greatest actors of this generation, Bob Odenkirk spoke about his life-changing experience. Bob suffered a near-fatal heart attack while he was filming episode 8 of last season. It was so bad that his heart actually stopped beating for 18 whole minutes. Fortunately though, Rosa Estrada, an extra on the set, knew CPR and she had access to a defibrillator and literally saved the actress' life. As fate would have it, she only had a defibrillator in the trunk of her car because she borrowed it from somebody and she was planning on returning it to them that day. In fact, she even tried to give it back to her but her friend wasn't home so she had to keep it with her. Otherwise, she wouldn't have had it had it that day. But thank God for that. Bob called this totally crazy coincidence and he said he was aware that it helped him immensely. The 59 year old actor also urged everybody to take a CPR class and said that it was the number one reason his life was saved and he got it within a minute or so after he fell down and if nobody around him knew how to do it who's to say if he'd still be here and we don't even want to think about that. So yes folks maybe look into getting yourself a CPR class right now. We're gonna do the same thing. It doesn't hurt to know and who knows you might even save a life one day. So how did Bob feel after he came back? After this terrifying incident production came to a halt for five weeks and when he came back bob actually felt better in a recent interview the actor revealed that he came out of the whole thing with a strangely fresh energy towards his whole life he even added that he felt like he was born again and to be fair he kind of was he said it became much easier for him to stay in the moment almost like he just woke up and didn't remember anything that was going on for bob it was kind of weird to have a newfound look at the world but he wanted to stay in touch with what happened as it gave him a really great connection to being alive and he stated that he came back to the set he felt like hey everybody let's go back to work and make stuff and that energy just carried throughout filming now even peter gould noticed this shift peter gould the showrunner and the creator of saul goodman noticed the change in bob's approach to the role when he came back he revealed that he wasn't there when the actor got sick but he made sure he was there to welcome him back to the set and he said it was a very suspenseful moment and everybody was just wondering what it was going to be like and it turned out that it was going to be great peter said that it was one of the most hopeful things imaginable isn't that a relief and we're so glad the actor took the positivities from this scary experience and finally Finally, the cast and crew of the show were more traumatized than Bob. After he came back to the set, Bob said that the cast and crew were more traumatized than he was. He said that he had a blank space around the incident and didn't really remember anything about that day or the next week and a half, really. But his friends and co-stars were there when he got a heart attack. He previously revealed that Patrick Fabian and Reese Seahorn screamed their heads off when it happened. He said, well, he didn't remember. These people saw him go down and the use of the defibrillator on him like three times and then also heard professionals around look at each other and, well, not look too hopeful about the situation. Bob stated that he went through all that after he came back and they shared stories with him because he really wanted to know and understand what happened. He expressed that he was really moved when he found out how many people cared about him. He was just really grateful and it meant a lot to him. He even thanked everybody on social media who showed concern and he said it was just really beautiful to him and he showed him that it could be good. After it happened, Bob got the epiphany that life is good and he needs to be more appreciative of everything he has because it's really great and he's got some great people around him. As for us, we're ecstatic that he's doing much better now and his performance in the final season might be his best yet so we're keeping our fingers crossed for that emmy this time now let's move on to some other related news first up better call saul's next episode title revealed folks if you weren't already beyond excited for the next episode of the show well this will definitely get your heart racing as far as spin-offs go better call saul has always kept the distance from breaking bad and that's not for any other reason except that it's equally as good as the parent show if not better and it holds up very very well without it too but 13 years after Breaking Bad released an episode titled Better Call Saul, the prequel show is finally returning the favor. The third to last episode of the series, airing August 1st, is titled Breaking Bad. And well, it has fans absolutely freaking out. We have good reason to believe that the episode will take us back to Albuquerque at the height of Heisenberg power, and we could cry just thinking about it. Moving on, Nebraska football clarifies Gene Takovich's timeline. All we have are good things to say about Vince Gilligan and Peter Gould. Both are extraordinary with everything they do and their attention to detail is incredible and that's one of the absolute best things about both shows and that's saying a lot. Now the creators have always been very careful with everything they leave in the show and fans have often wondered about Gene Takovich's timeline. We 
know that Saul goes into hiding at the end of Breaking Bad and becomes Gene, and this happened in late March or early April of 2010, and since then we've seen snippets of him in the future, but there's never been any confirmation on how much time has passed. Well, until now. As Gene plans to rob the mall he works at, he needs to become buddies with the security guards working the night shift. Of course, he does it with ease. Lots of Cinnabon and Nebraska football talk. For those who don't know, Nebraska is a college football obsessed state, so it makes perfect sense that people talk about it all the time. And in the show doing that, we get an exact timeline of when these events are happening. After the characters reveal some things with the Nebraska Cornhusker, we can safely assume that the events of the latest episode happen around October 24, 2010. We're not going to lie, we thought years had passed, but we're only six months ahead from when Saul left Breaking Bad. Glad to see that it only took him that long to fall back into his Jimmy McGill ways. And lastly, Jim O'Hare talks about his role. So if you've seen the latest episode of Better Call Saul, you know it had lots of Cinnabon. And well, if you're Jim O'Hare, it was a dream job to be in that episode. We see that Jim's character, Frank, loves Cinnabon, despite his wife's objection, and when Gene brings him one every single day, he can just not say no. In a recent interview, the actor revealed that the team brought in a hundred fresh Cinnabons every single day he was shooting. Oh boy, we would do anything to be on set on one of those days. And Jim even revealed that after one of his takes, a medic followed him to his little break room and asked to check his blood sugar levels to make sure everything was alright. He said he did end up eating a lot of them because it was so important to the storyline and the director had told him beforehand that he needed to live every bite he ate. Even before he flew to New Mexico to shoot his episode, they sent him a big box so he could practice cutting and eating them. It's a good thing Jim was a fan because it sounded like a lot and he did a really good job at it too because we definitely ran to our nearest Cinnabon after watching the episode. That's a wrap for this video. What do you guys think about the final season of Better Call Saul? Can you spot the difference in Bob's approach to the character before and after his heart attack? Let us know in the comments down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.